special rules are, are interesting, uh, and to me there's two classes of them. There's the national special rules, and then there's the specific army special rules. And the national special rules are pretty much done once, and then they just get polished and adjusted, and occasionally they get um, expanded when a particular force gets a special rule. And it's like, hmm, that really ought to move back into the whole national special rule category and so forth. Um, so they're pretty static. Um, you do a new nation, you come up with a new set of special rules, trying to look at the, the mythology of the nation of itself and trying to reflect how they see themselves and put that into the book. So um, the first one, which was a real challenge, was, say, the um, Italians. I mean, the Italians uh, in the English-speaking world in the Second World War have a pretty bad reputation. I mean, it's British historiography in particular. They had to have, OK, we're getting beaten by the Germans, but we're completely trashing the Italians. Um, so trying to find out a little more balanced view of that and ask the Italians what they saw as their strengths and weaknesses and so forth, and then trying to put them into the, into the thing and doing the same for each nation as we come along, looking at their mythology of who they are and then trying to create that in the game. Most of the national special rules are actually not pointed because they're all meant to be balanced against each other. Uh, some, of them, some of them do um, influence the points a bit. For example, like Stormtrooper might, might tack an extra point on here or there. When we get to four specific um, special rules, the key there is we try and keep them um, small, but we also try and think about should this force have something to make it a little different? Is it adding anything to the list? Is it worth the effort? Uh, most of the time, I try and put special rules that are just flavorful, but not particularly overwhelmingly influential. But yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the things I put in was the, the scout rule for the Volks Grenadiers, which allows them, if they take the scouts, the scout's actually doing something, they're doing a, a, a spearhead, making them attack. If you don't want to do, have them, and you don't want to use that special rule, you just don't take the scouts. Some special rules are pointed, others are not. Um, the ones that aren't aren't usually are a swap out for something. So, for example, um, like the like the Polish paratroopers, for example, or Polish any Polish unit uh, in late war, um, they follow the usual British rules, but they swap out British bulldog for their own uh, special rule. In terms of um, balance and so forth, what we're really looking for in most cases is just a small little smidgen that sometimes will make them different. We're not looking for something big and so forth. They're there for, to give that force, um, help them perform the way that they performed historically, and that's something that, um, that that's the, the guiding rule for the special rules. Mm -hmm. We don't just chuck them in because we need a, a special rule or something like that. And it's not, and it's not necessary that every list has one. Um, so it's kind of a, um, if we really feel that a unit has done something exceptional mm -hmm. and we want to have that play out on the table, um, that's when we'll, we'll bring something in like that. In terms of the, the number of special rules in the game, that depends on your viewpoint. There's two ways of looking at that. If I'm playing a game, usually there'll be all the normal special rules that come up all the time, and one or two um, for me and one or two for my opponent at most. So in this particular game, I've got one or two things extra to remember, and maybe they won't even have any impact on the game. When I come to it, um, I look at the opponent and go, oh, so you move um, faster than normal when you're doing this, or this happens, or something. It's like, okay, well, if that comes up, I'll remember to um, think about that, but meanwhile, I'll just forget that. I mean, when taken as a whole, late war has a lot of special rules. Right. Um, but again, late war has so many more lists compared to anything else. It may seem like mid-war has got special rules, but that's because there's just heaps less lists. If you look at the British Commonwealth forces, there's heaps of special rules in there because there's all the different nationalities. Now, I think the complaints to a lot of degrees come from people who are trying to encompass the whole game in their head and go, OK, this force, how's it going to do against this? How's it going to do against this? How's it going to do against this? What about that? And they see a lot of special rules as growing their task of trying to encompass the whole game. It's like a control, a sense of control. They want to know what everybody else's armies can do, so they need to basically know all the rules. So they think it's just too many rules to keep track of. Yeah, so yeah. they have to keep up with every army. Yeah, every army, even though they're not actually using that army. Yeah. I suppose my viewpoint is having more interesting forces is the driver for having them. 
and um, I personally aren't so much of an optimizer as a oh that looks an interesting toy or oh I like the history of this unit um, sort of thing so my bias is more towards that. Um, if people are in the um, optimizer frame of mind well it adds a little challenge to them and uh, gives them a little more to think about I suppose. Mm -hmm.